The question I often get asked is, how do I find the strum pattern in a song? It seems like a simple question, but there might be more to it than it appears on the surface. I'll explain more. Let's do this. Finding the perfect strum pattern for a song can be a bit elusive, especially if you're early in your guitar learning journey. While there's no magical formula, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step process that you can follow to make it much easier. Then I'll give you some tips and answer some common questions I often get. The good news is everyone has some degree of built-in natural rhythm. And a lot of times what's happening when we're trying to figure out the rhythm for a song is our head is kind of getting in the way. We're trying to analyze it instead of just feel it and feel the groove. But there are good reasons it can be difficult. With most popular songs, there's a lot going on. Oftentimes, there's not even a guitar part. And at other times, there may be several guitars and the actual rhythm is created by several different parts put together. This means that there's not one perfect strum pattern. Your job is to come up with something that's basically the essence of the groove that you can translate on your guitar. And it's gonna be somewhat personal preference. And of course, it's also based on your own technical ability to both strum and change chords. Now that said, if you come up with a strum pattern and it works well with the song for you, then it works. It's good. Let me go through a basic process that I use when I'm trying to figure out a strum pattern for a song. It's worked well for me and for many students. Now first and most importantly, you gotta figure out the beat and whether it's a three beat or a four beat song. Yeah, you could use the terminology three quarter time, 4-4 four, four time, all that, but I want to keep it directly to the essence of the matter. We're looking for four pulses or three pulses. Now keep in mind, most popular music, about 80%, is going to be four pulses. That means, John, Joe, three, four, one, two, three, four. I usually start off without the guitar, just either tapping on my knee or clapping my hands, sometimes tapping my foot. Then I kind of listen to where the bass drum is falling and, and where the chords are changing, and I can pretty quickly feel if it's a 4-4 four, or four, 3-4. Four. You know, I'll try it out. I tap 4, and if it doesn't fit, I'll try 3. Uh, if that seems to go right into the pocket, great. If not, I'll go back and forth a few times till I figure it out. Let me show you a quick demo of how I might do this. So first, I want to listen to where the pulse is. And I'm going to start clapping, or tapping my leg in this case. Cat. Yeah, that works. Now, that sounds about right. That's kind of, I, I can tell if I listen closely, that's where the bass drum and the bass guitar are going. I'm gonna go twice as fast too. I think that's the actual B. One, two, three, four, one. Sounds like four. Let me try three and see what it sounds like. One, two, three, one, two. See, that doesn't change on the chord. Let's try again. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm pretty clear that's four beats. One, two, three, four. Now, once I got this sorted, I'm ready to pull out my guitar. I'm gonna start off really easy. I'm just going to play that same beat on my guitar, usually just straight down, and I'll even mute the strings just to get the, the rhythm pattern. Then I'll go on to add the chords. That means, of course, you gotta know the chords of the song, and I might not even do the whole song, maybe just a chorus or verse, just to get the groove going with the chord changes. And then finally, I'll start enhancing the straight down rhythm with some up strums. Usually the way I do that is I try to match one of the simple strum patterns I already know with the groove that I've got going. And that'll usually give me at least a good foundation that I can build on later. Let me show you another little demo of that process. Now I'm gonna translate that to the guitar. I'm not just gonna mute the strings to start. Let's find that B. There we go. And we can go twice as fast also. I think the beat is one, two, three. I'm listening to the melody too, and I noticed the melody went down to the place where that's usually the beat one. Two, three, four. Got it now. Three, four. Now, I'm gonna try just playing the chords using that beat. I'm gonna go for that every other chord to keep it simpler. Ah, there we 
we go. Got another chorus. <laughs> and then I'll up it a little bit. There we go. That's working. One, two, three, four. So once you can do that pretty well, it's time to start trying some upstrokes. What I'll usually do is try to match a strum or a simple strum that I already know to what I'm doing. Let me find that one again. One, two, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. This is a nice simple strum. I'll start without the chords again. And it's getting the more complicated part. Here we go with chords. So that works. So that's an idea what the process looks like. It's meant to be rough guidelines. You don't have to follow an exact order, but I will tell you, trying to figure out a strum before you figure out where the pulse is and whether it's three or four, it's not gonna go anywhere. I will say in all fairness, I usually have to kind of go back and forth a few times before I get it just right. I wanna give you some more valuable tips that I think will help you tremendously. First, make sure you have a repertoire of a handful of basic strum patterns that you can use in situations like this. Now you wanna make sure some are four beat patterns and some are three beat patterns, maybe a little heavier on the four beat pattern. And you wanna practice this, that's how you get good at it. Don't be disappointed if the first time you try it, you don't get the results that you hope for. Start with simpler songs with a, a fairly easy strum pattern, let's say, or one that you maybe even know what to use. And then try listening to a variety of songs, picking up the beat and trying to discern if it's a three beat or a four beat song. One thing I'll mention here is when I talk about beats, I'm talking about even spacing. So it's the kind of thing you tap your foot to. You want to be even between each of the beats like this. Another tip is if you can get a hold of the sheet music, it can be helpful. Even if you can't read sheet music, it's valuable to see what they use for a time signature and it might have some other clues. And along those lines, I'd encourage you little by little to learn a little bit of music theory and how to read sheet music. Uh, at least time signatures. That's that three quarter time, four, four time, that kind of stuff. I'll put a link to a video that'll explain a little more of that. Sometimes when I'm trying to figure out a strum pattern, I'll tap on my knees and I can get sort of with one hand what would be a downstroke and what would be an upstroke. You can experiment that and see if it works for you. Now here's a, an important one. Go for the simplest strum pattern that works with that song. You can always enhance it later and add more complexity to it. But if you get the basic pattern, you got a chance to get used to the song. Then you got more ways to go. And one last tip. We use a lot of these down up arrows to indicate strum patterns. Take those with a grain of salt. They are helpful, but they don't always exactly map out the strum. And it's not just about down and up patterns. There's also nuances, like how hard you hit the strings, which part of the strings you hit and things like that. So just a little bit of a warning. Don't get too attached to those arrows. So that's it for now. Thanks for joining me. If you got some value out of this video, please give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. And if you'd like a little more help with your strumming, I'll put a link to a video at the end of this video that I think you'll find incredibly valuable. Check it out. <laughs>